Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that pretty green day so far on the daily today. We have a lot of stocks in the green, lots of tech stocks in the green, even Meta up, Google, Apple, Amazon. Tesla is at $169 per share, so it's at a very interesting price right now. So make sure you stay throughout this entire video because in this video, we're gonna be going over the most interesting stocks, the most popular stocks, and starting off the pack strong is going to be Tesla. So let's dive into them, see what's going on. Before we do that, go ahead and just hit the thumbs up on this video, subscribe on YouTube with post notifications on and share it with a friend because you know that this one's going to be a banger. So the first stock we're going to be talking about is Tesla and look at that down 11% just in the past one week and down 16% in the past one month. So we've seen it sold off a lot from highs in the month, it's down 25%. It's very oversold on the weekly and the monthly chart. If we pull out to the three month chart, it's down 41%. So it's also extremely oversold on that three month chart. Now, if we look at the yearly chart, we see a downtrending pattern, but we do see spikes back up. So although Tesla is in a downward direction overall with downward momentum, we do see upward rebounds happening time and time again. So there can definitely be a rebound to around $225 per share or above $200 per share. If we scroll down, we can see the market cap is $536 billion with a PE ratio of 51. Obviously, it's a little bit overvalued in the sense of a value stock, but Tesla is not a value stock. Um, it is a revenue monster and a net income beast. So Tesla's goal is obviously just to get as large as it can with not just the electric vehicles, but also move into the robots and solar and many other things. Here we can see quarter over quarter, Tesla has been pretty consistent with its EPS breaking and beating analyst estimates last four quarters in a row consecutively. Make sure you follow me on Twitter because I retweet a bunch of great things, but one awesome tweet, well, just an interesting tweet um, about Tesla. We see Tesla is losing about 20 billion in valuation per day. In other words, Tesla is losing a Twitter valuation pre-purchase before Elon Musk uh, bought Twitter and the shares skyrocketed. Almost every day that it trades, Tesla is losing 20 billion almost per day. Gives an entirely new meaning to depreciation. And following up that tweet on investors.com, we see uh, Tesla stock on track for the worst day ever as Elon Musk's EV giant faces four big headwinds. Tesla has been a monster stock over much of its history, especially from its stratospheric run from mid 2019 to late 21. But in 2022, Tesla has been a big loser on track to ne uh, lose nearly 52% of its value as of November 22. That would easily surpass 2016's 11% fall, the only other annual decline since Tesla stock became public in 2010. The sell-off has intensified with EV giant losing nearly half of its value in the past two months. On Monday, Tesla stock skidded. 6.8% down to fresh two-year low. That's S&P 500's worst performer. Here are some major headwinds facing Tesla stock from Elon Musk's Twitter circus. And of course, it's the Twitter circus that is gonna be talked about first to Tesla demanding concerns. Here we see Tesla stock annual performance over the last 12 years. Interesting to see there's only been two years of negative returns and 2022 is one of those and by far the largest in a big way. So it'll be interesting to see if 2023 and 2024 could be huge bounce back years. China COVID concerns is the second one other than Twitter. Tesla demand is the third one. China's COVID woes feed into Tesla's demand concerns, partly due to big Shanghai production increase. Tesla already cut prices in China, but there are local media reports of further cuts below year's end, but wait times are essentially at zero. Tesla may be betting on a big quarter for European sales, but that could draw down backlogs heading into 2023. So that's definitely something interesting to think about. That comes as China's EV competition intensifies with more models like ticker symbol BYDDF, which isn't on the New York Stock Exchange, but we have NEO, all right? 
and Lee Automotive are two big ones. And we're gonna be talking about Neo versus Lee Automotive versus XPEV in one of the upcoming videos. So make sure you subscribe with post notifications on so you don't miss out on that future video. So those are all China EV companies that are gonna be reporting with the Model 3, the Model Y, obviously the Shanghai factory in uh, China is a big revenue producer and a big part of Tesla's business model. So that cannot fail. Tesla Cybertruck is expected to begin production next year with Musk's expecting early output in mid-2023, but if the OF delay Cybertruck stays on schedule, volume deliveries may not start until year end of 2024. We also have the Twitter saga going on. Tesla stock follows EV rivals, aggressive growth. So Tesla stock is not doing well, but it's not alone. Aggressive growth stocks have had a terrible 2022. Tesla's EV rival in particular has struggled, including Neo stock, obviously under $10 per share now, Lee Automotive, Rivian, which is down like 70% or more, and BYD. So by that measure, Tesla stock doesn't look especially bad over the course of 2022. However, BYD is flat in November while Neo and Lee are up in the month, while Tesla stock has lost one fourth of its value. Now that could be an indicator that we could see Tesla stock have that little rebound that we were talking about. If we do, if we have seen Neo and Lee already up this month, that could be a good sign. More broadly, a bear market has ruled for most of the year, while major indexes have rebounded from October lows. They are still down significantly for the year, especially the NASDAQ. We also had an analyst come in and say investors need to brace for more wide swings and buy back unlikely to help near term. The headwinds just keep stacking up. Tesla has to successfully develop and deliver Cybertruck and full self-driving if it has to meet these lofty expectations, says one of the top Tesla analysts. The magnitude of stock repurchase Musk hinted during the Q3 call suggests just 1 to 1.5% of its outstanding shares, he says. So that's a very interesting article to be reading. You can pause it and read through it a little bit. But unfortunately, we've already talked about Tesla for a long time. And I don't want this whole video to be about Tesla. So let's at least talk about a few more uh, different stocks. But read that paragraph about buybacks may not mean much. Okay, and let's talk about Apple stock real quick at $150 per share, up 1.5% on the day. Here on the three-month chart, we still see them down 11%. In the last month, we saw them as low as $134 per share. And you guys know I reiterate on the channel all the time, buying under $135 per share, but I want to load up on Apple closer to $115 to $95 per share. Now, it's not out of this world for Tesla to go, or sorry, excuse me, Apple to go to $115 per share. So that's why I have my price alerts there, but I'm also buying at $135 per share also, um, additionally, because right now Apple has a pretty strong support around $135 per share. If we scroll down, we can also see that there's a market cap of 2.3 trillion. So Apple's still a massive market cap compared to some of these other stocks with a PE ratio of 24, implying that right now it is a better deal than Tesla stock if you're looking at a value standpoint. We also have a dividend of 0.6 on Apple, which might sound small, but given the stock's growth over time, it coupled with that dividend, it's actually a pretty fair dividend and a pretty great dividend, actually a great dividend stock. Okay, some bullish things to consider about Apple. We think Apple is still innovating with introductions of Apple Pay, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods. Each of these could drive incremental revenue, but more crucially help retain iPhone users and build a community over time. Apple iPhone and iOS operating system have consistently been rated as the top head of the pack between greater smartphone penetration in emerging markets and repeat sales to current customers. Apple has plenty of opportunity to reap the rewards of the iPhone business, which is obviously one of its you know, largest businesses. Some bear things or risks with Apple. Many of you may not know this, but Apple is believed to be behind firms like Google and Amazon in artificial intelligence or AI development, notably Siri voice recognition, you know, Amazon Alexa, 
Google has a very good voice recognition too, which could be problematic as tech firms look to integrate AI in order to, to deliver premium services to customers. If Apple were to ever launch a buggy software update or subpar service, it could diminish the firm's reputation for building products that just work. So that is a huge risk that nobody thinks about. You know, if the new software update downloads a bug in everyone's phone and everyone gets hacked or something like that, and then Apple's not trusted anymore, that could be a huge, huge black swan event that could take, not take out Apple, but it could definitely drop by 50% of its current market valuation, closer to 1.5, 1.25 billion if something major like that happen. I'm not saying that that is gonna happen, but it's obviously a risk that you have to take into consideration. We can also see that the EPS is trending down from $2 per share, closer to $1 per share on that EPS, which is a red flag. Although Apple has been beating expectations four out of the last four consecutively in a row. So where do I think Apple's gonna go from here? The yearly chart is very volatile as you can see, but because we have Thanksgiving and Christmas around the corner and people are gonna be buying Apple products for Christmas coming up, I am gonna be bullish in the next few weeks on Apple. I think $150 per share, $165 per share on Apple is definitely um, achievable before the year end. And then I wanna see a big sell-off on Apple closer to that $150, $135, or even $115 per share if we continue to have a bear market in 2023. And that's where I wanna be loading up on Apple. I think Apple's a great stock to have in a cornerstone of anyone's portfolio. And it is a great stock to couple with something like Tesla stock because it balances out the risk of Tesla stock just a little bit more. Okay, so let's quickly look at something like Amazon at $93 per share. Remember, in the past year, Apple is only down 7%. In the past month, we see Amazon down 21%. We see them down 31% in the past three months, and they're down 50% in the past year. If you go back um, in time to November 2021, when Amazon was $180 per share, or $160 per share. If you ask anyone at $180 per share if Amazon was gonna fall by 50% of their stock price, nobody would have believed that. So now that Amazon's down 50%, it could be more of a buying opportunity than something like Apple is. A lot of people were probably listening to the last segment of the Apple and thinking Apple's not gonna get fall by 40%, 30%, 50%. Look at Amazon, it already has fallen by 50% in the last one year. So it's definitely possible for Amazon, uh, Apple to same thing. However, with that being said, I think Amazon's more of a buying opportunity for long-term portfolios, for swing trades, and for option calls, all of it right now. And in the short term, Amazon has Black Friday for Thanksgiving, and they also have Christmas to benefit on for all the shopping, shopping, shopping. So this could be a strong quarter um, for Amazon Q4 and pushing the momentum into 2023 also. So who knows if this is the bottom for Amazon. I think maybe closer to $80 per share could be closer to a bottom for Amazon. However, with that being said, I'm dollar cost averaging in Amazon right now. Um, we're already up a little bit on my option that we took out on the close friends list, up 14% on that option. So we'll see if we have a green Monday tomorrow and we'll be up even more on that option. We see the PE ratio is 84. It's overvalued compared to something like Apple if you're just looking at PE ratio and earnings. Um, if we scroll down, we can see the EPS is under 50% and Amazon is actually trending almost to a negative earning company. We, can, we saw that the earnings were only 20 cents per share two quarters ago, and last quarter it was only around 30 cents per share. So that's definitely a little bit concerning. And if we look at what analysts have to say about Amazon, we have 50% upside on average to $139 per share. The very lowest any analyst has is $103 per share in the next 12 months, and the highest is $192 per share. Okay, this was reiterated of just a few days ago by five-star analyst from Goldman Sachs, Eric, at $165 price point, 
We have JPM Securities reiterated nine days ago at $140 price point for Amazon. Personally, I think Amazon at $125 per share or $135 per share is a great swing trade and can definitely happen in the next 12 months. Also, obviously, I love Amazon for long-term portfolios under $100 per share, but I'm loading closer to $80 per share, dollar cost averaging in all the way in between. So I hope you guys really appreciate that video. Hit subscribe with post notifications on. Share this video with a friend if you think that they will find it helpful. Hit success number six if you want to join my private trading group. If you want to see results that people have been having up 100%, $548. This is some student's very first option trade over 100% gains. Just one day of holding up $150. This one was up 237 this student was up 319% gains, and the list goes on and on and on. We have over 500 positive testimonials, over 600 positive te testimonials now, actually, and over 2,000 total students signed up. So if you want to become a success story yourself, just reach out to me on Instagram. It's easy as that. Send me a message, the Daily Stock Market, 184,000 followers now, and I'll send you over my website so you can see how everything works. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.